ESPN's Mike Greenberg with Armin and Levac on 104.5. The team, Mike and Mike, have an awesome contest uh, going on right now. Greeny's going to tell us all about it. Uh, Greeny, first off, how concerned should we be about the Mets? Well, I think we should be very concerned about the Mets. Um, if I had told you before the series began they're going to lose the games that are started by Harvey and DeGrom, you would have said they're going to lose the World Series. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to have been right about this. But when Familia gives up the home run in the ninth inning in game one, there was a part of me that said that that's going to be the, the moment that loses the World Series. For everything else that has happened, that one pitch is the entire series right now because regardless of how good Coito was last night and regardless of the degree to which they frustrated and got to DeGrom last night, the Mets had a game in this series where they had a one-run lead in the ninth inning and one out in their closer on the mound. That's a, that's a lock. That's a game that they absolutely win. And if they did, if they had shut it down right there, the entire spec—I mean, everything you were thinking, everything we're talking about—would have been completely different. So, to me, that's overwhelmingly the biggest moment of this series, and and I fear that when it's all said and done, that's going to have been the biggest moment of the series. Now, they come home. Syndergaard has been great at home, um, and I I certainly think they have a chance to play their way back into this. But I think you'd have to be crazy to bet on it. Greeny, that being said, what what do you love most about this series so far? Well, I mean, it's been compelling. Certainly, Game One was a classic. I mean, I, you know, I, I am rooting for the Mets, so you know, I hated to see them surrender that lead in the ninth inning. But it certainly was a game filled with a whole lot of intriguing moments. Um, you know, and and even you know something that the players had nothing to do with. But I mean, a power outage in the middle of the game and all sorts of things like that. It was a, a crazy Game One, and then last night, I suppose. You had to marvel at the performance of Johnny Cueto and marvel at the peskiness uh, of the Royals. And that's probably a bad word to attach to them because it makes it sound like they're not great players. They're great players who really know how to frustrate power pitching, and that is what the Mets live on. So um, it, I think it's a bad matchup for the Mets. It's as simple as that. It's not a question of a better team. It's a question of a team that matches up extremely well against the Mets. And I, you know, at this point, I, I picked the Mets in six, and if you gave me a mulligan, I, I certainly would take it. I, certainly at this point, I would expect the Royals are going to win. ESPN's Mike Greenberg with Armin in the back, 104.5 The Team, ESPN Radio. Greeny, listening to the show this morning, how much weight should we put in the idea that you guys jinxed the Mets because the Cubs fans got pied in the face? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot. I, 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 you know, I believe in that stuff. I believe in karma and all that kind of stuff. I was trying to make a case this morning that our Mets fans, on our staff, Bubba and Ray, should themselves be pied tomorrow. That they should choose to be pied because clearly the karma has gone against them and that in order to reverse that, they themselves should take the pies. And, uh, and they refused, which I think was a mistake. And, um, and, and so we'll see. I have offered to take a pie to the face if the Jets make the Super Bowl. I will be delighted to take a pie to the face if the Jets make the Super Bowl. And I think our Mets fans should be delighted to take a pie to the face in the event uh, in in order to try and turn this World Series around. And, in fact, I'd say if they don't do it and then Syndergaard gets lit up tomorrow night, I would say Ray and Bubba would probably be the biggest reason why. Wow. I was kind of shocked with what a diehard Mets fan Bubba is that he didn't jump for the idea to do anything to help his team. Yeah, I was too. I'm disappointed. I mean, there's no two ways about it. I'm disappointed in those boys. I think they've let down the squad. ESPN, it's Mike Greenberg with Armin in the back. Hey, Todd Bowles, what have we learned about him, the new Jets head coach, six games into the season? That he can't beat Tom Brady either. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I like Todd Bowles very much, and I think this is a good Jet team. And I was extremely frustrated by that loss on Sunday because the Jets played that game – well enough that they should have won, and they made just enough mistakes to allow Tom Brady to beat them. And look, sometimes there's nothing you can do but tip your cap. Brady was brilliant, beyond brilliant. I don't even know what words I would use to describe how well he played in that game. That's the best game I've ever seen anyone play against the Jets in my entire life, and I'm 48 years old. But that said, um, I still don't think it beats the Jets if Fitzpatrick doesn't fumble at the beginning and if Marshall catches a touchdown that's right in his hands, and if the punter doesn't mysteriously get hurt and we wind up signing Steve Weatherford off the radio and we keep giving them short fields because the punting was just awful. I think those three things turn the game, and I think if those three things go the other way, I think the Jets win even as brilliant as Brady was. 
And you know what? I'm sick and tired of moral victories. I'm sick and tired of we went toe to toe with them. I'm sick and tired of being a wild card. That that that, that, that was a statement game. That was a colossal win sitting right there to be had for the Jets, and they didn't win it. And to me, it, 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 there's nothing more than that to be said. Well, Greeny, this is a, a rare occasion for both of us because our favorite teams are playing each other in Week 8, and it's a relevant, meaningful game. Your Jets, my Raiders, how scared are you to go to the West Coast? Oh, boy. I am. I think it's a scary game for, for a, a lot of reasons. Um, you know, back-to-back weeks on the road I think is always tough, especially when one of the games – uh, involves a long trip like this one does. And the Raiders are good. I mean, they're obviously much, much better than they've been in recent years. I don't need to tell you that. Um, the young quarterback, I think, can be dynamic. They have some playmakers on defense. Cooper is spectacular. I think if they do put Revis on Cooper all over the field all day, that is a matchup that you would you know, pay the price of admission to see all by itself. Um, you know, I believe the Jets should win. I think their defense is good enough that they should win. It took a... a a, an historic performance from Tom Brady to beat them last week. And I do like Derek Carr, but he's not Tom Brady. So I, and, and Fitzpatrick has played well on the offense. If Ivory is okay, they, they should be good. I believe the Jets should win the game, um, but not easily. And, and I certainly don't think it's, it's a lock. And this is a game, you know, it's actually a very big game in the conference if you look at it, because there's a lot of separation going on now between – the, the wild card contenders and the not so much. And I think the Jets and Raiders, at least at this point, look like teams that are going to be contending for a wild card at the end. And it may very well be that only one of the two will be able to get in because I think Pittsburgh is going to catch fire when they all get healthy. So um, I think it is a very big game, and I do think the Jets should win. But to, does it scare me? It absolutely does. ESPN's Mike Greenberg of Mike and Mike with Armin in the back, 104.5, the team ESPN Radio. Greeny, the Giants, are they the favorites in the NFC East in your mind? Probably. Um, you know, I think they're the best team in that division, but I'm not sure. You know, Dallas, I don't think that even when they get Des Bryant back, everything that I hear from people who have had that injury is that it's not going to be until next year that he's Des Bryant again. Now, his very presence, I have to believe, will make some difference, but I don't know how much. I, I, I think that by the time Romo gets back, it might be too late. But frankly, the division is, is mediocre enough that it might not be. I think that, that the Cowboys might yet win that division at 8-8 eight and eight or 9-7. and seven. Uh, But they are just, they've been unable to keep their head above water. Washington could win that division. You watch them some weeks, and they look pretty good. Sometimes it's two different halves. Um, you know, they're banged up. If they get healthy, they could win. The Eagles are the team, frankly, in that division I like the least. Um, and, and I think they have, and, and I mean this, I think they have the worst quarterback. Um, I think Sam Bradford is worse than Kirk Cousins. Um, I think I think Romo, obviously, is the best quarterback when he's healthy. I'm, I'm not including the backups in Dallas in this discussion. Um, so I, I, I think any of the four teams could wind up winning it. Uh, if I had to bet on it, I think I would bet on the Giants, but I would do so with extremely little confidence. Now, uh, what's turning out to be a fun matchup tonight, New England earlier in the year, you would have thought this would just be a doormat matchup, but with Dan Campbell taking over Miami, they look pretty good. Percentage chance you give that Miami can upset New England tonight? I don't know. It's a very, very tough game to figure. Um, How much of what the Dolphins have done the last couple of weeks has been a reinvigoration based upon the coaching change that obviously so many of the players wanted, coupled with playing bad teams back-to-back weeks. Tennessee is bad. Houston's a joke. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the only honest answer I could give you to that is I don't know. My gut feeling is that the Dolphins will play the Patriots tough. But Thursday nights on the road are very, very tough spots for any team. Uh, so I certainly do like New England to win the game tonight. Uh, the last I saw, the number was eight. Would I be willing to give eight? I would do so hesitantly. I, I think if you made me play that game, I think I would give the point. Our buddy Mike Greenberg with Armin in the back. And Greeny, you and the big fella got a cool contest going on, man. Mike and Mike at the college football playoff presented by AutoZone. Tell us about it. It's the easiest thing in the world. I mean, all you have to do is what I would hope you would do anyway, which is get up in the morning and listen to the show or put it on TV on ESPN2. We're going to stop the show twice a day, every single day, the rest of this week and each of the next three weeks, and we're going to give you a winning word. We make this as easy as we possibly can. We're not sneaking it in. You don't have to listen for clues. We're going to tell you, this is the word of the day, 
and here are the three ways to enter, and you should enter all three of those ways, there's a triple as your chance to win. And then we're going to select one winner this week, next week, and the two weeks after that, four winners, each with a guest, coming with us to Arizona for the championship game, VIP accommodations, all expenses paid, sit with us at the game, be our guests at our shows, VIP tailgate, all kinds of behind-the-scenes experiences, the kind of stuff that really no one else gets. It will be, I promise, a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience for a sports fan. And, And all you have to do, again, is hopefully what you would do anyway, and that is listen to us tomorrow morning and every morning for the next couple of weeks. And then you just enter the way we tell you when we give you the word. It really is as simple as it could be. And Mike's Playoff Trip dot com. Mike Mike's Playoff Trip dot com has the three ways that you can enter as well for the Mike and Mike at the College Football Playoff presented by AutoZone. What a cool contest! I feel like every year, Greeny, you guys just continue to raise the bar, and that's a tough thing to do, man. Because every year it's such a cool prize. Yeah, we've done. We did the NBA Finals. We did the ESPYS. We, we get, did a trip to Hawaii. Um, but I think this one is going to be the best. And, um, you know, I mean, the college football playoff last year was the first year, and it turned out to be bigger than anyone could have even imagined. And I, I don't see any reason why it won't be again this year. Arizona is obviously a wonderful venue, especially in January. So you can't ask for more. I, I think it should be a terrific experience. Hey, Greeny, Chris Carter, he, he has grown leaps and bounds from, from listening to him with you every morning. I, I love the way he's embraced controversy and just really added to the football knowledge of your show. How good has he gotten? He's gotten great. I, mean, I don't know if he's gotten I mean, I think he was already great. He, he has all the things that you need to be to be a good talk show host. You know, he's smart, he's opinionated, and he's credible. Um, and, and you can put those three in any order you want um, as, as far as importance. But when you have all of them, then you're, you have the opportunity to be really good. And he adds an enormous um, amount of knowledge and of um, information and of insight and of fun to our show. Um, so he spends three days a week with us, and it's been terrific. And, um, you know, I think that the world has changed. There's a time when just the two of us sitting there talking was enough. And I think that now there's so much going on out there that I don't think just two guys sitting and talking for 20 hours a week is enough. I think it needs to be something bigger and something different and more dynamic. So we've added a lot of those pieces, Chris being the most um, regular and and the one who spends the most time with us. But we've added a lot of other regular features, and I think it has really helped a lot. Yeah, Chris Carter with you guys is is a lot of fun to listen to. Mike Greenberg with Armin in the back of Mike and Mike, 6 to 10 every weekday morning. The Mike and Mike at the College Football Playoff presented by AutoZone. They want to take you to the College Football Playoff. Go to mikesplayofftrip.com. Greeny, we're going to be in Bristol next week doing our show live. If you can believe that, they allowed us back for another time. So (laughs) hopefully uh, we'll bump into you while we're out there, man. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you guys.